Okay, for this tutorial, we'll introduce you how to use the <coughs> bake script uh, that you can find in the exporter directory of the SDK in order to bake your textures uh, with full render or shadow maps. And I'm going to show you how to do so. So, first, launch Blender and resize my workspace a bit. Here you go. Something like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Join area, yes. Okay, split. Okay, okay, nice UV image editor, we're gonna need it, okay, <coughs> add a plane to my scene, scale it a little, put it somewhere in the center of my scene, okay, and I'm gonna add a little texture, so go on material, add a new material, Okay, nothing new is here, N nothing new here. We already all cover uh, all the steps <coughs> in previous tutorial. I'm only going to focus on uh, how to bake. So, okay, I got a texture here. I'm gonna go in texture to see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna link my stone wall here and simply unwrap, select everything and scale it a bit, Ooh, not that much, to create some tiles. I'm gonna go select my cube and I'm going to move before doing this I'm going to move my camera a bit okay and since I'm playing with the camera I'm simply going to resize the field of view <coughs> okay go back to my cube and I'm gonna add a texture on my cube on my desktop here you go that should be good and go in edit mode Link the texture and unwrap. Okay. Now <clears throat> we're gonna go in scripting and we are gonna go search inside the SDK exporter and bake.py. Okay, before using it, I suggest you to read the instructions uh, because you have to do a little uh, installation. Basically, what you need to do is drag and drop okay this file, the UV calc. A smart project mod py and dump it inside the dot script directory of uh, blender <coughs> okay select okay select everything now I'm going to first do a full render here we got uh, the bake max here I'm, I'm leaving the default uh, value here I'm only simply going to change this one and I'm going to put 512 Every uh, object in the scene will be resized, okay? This is the max, uh, not resized, I mean the texture, okay, that will be baked into will be adjusted depending on the size of the object. And this is for the largest, the biggest object in your scene. The top texture will be 512, 512. Every object, like in this case, it's sure that my plane will take a 512, 512, and my cube will be smaller than that. I don't know exactly how big the plane is, okay, but it's going to be a ratio, okay, uh, adjusted to a power of two that will be applied on this cube. I'm going to modify here to show UV. <coughs> okay, so that was the first step. And also modify the output directory to point wherever uh, you want on your drive. Me, it's on my desktop. I just created the directory called bake, and everything will be, every texture generated will be dumped inside that directory. I'm going to slide it a little and go on layers here. Okay, so basically the, the mechanism it's pretty similar as the SIO2 exporter. Whatever is selected and it's on the first uh, layer will be baked uh, accordingly. For this example I'm simply going to use the default okay, render settings but uh, you can also bake with ambient occlusion or enable uh, soft light okay but this you know can take up to several minutes okay to bake the texture depending on the size and the, the complexity of the object so I'm just going to stick to the normal standard uh, rendered setting here to bake my uh, scene here and I'm going to do a full bake okay here so I'm gonna I select everything my layer one is there I'm going to right click execute the script then you might recognize this little dialog here, okay? Except that uh, it's not going to be asked like all every time for every object, okay? This is a modified version that asks you once for the settings and use them, okay, 
uh, for the rest of your object. Here, by default, I put, you know, like, the parameters, you know, like the island margin or the fill quality and fill holes, like, I, I put, like, the, the settings that I feel gives a good result, okay, but you can always change that. So, I'm going to bake my scene here, and I'm going to be able to see literally the result here. So, everything is fine. I'm going to go on texture, and as you can see, okay, I was on my layer 1, and now... I duplicate, I create a copy of whatever was selected here and I dump it inside the second uh, <coughs> inside the second layer because if something gets screwed up you can always you know come back to your first layer, do the modification and then you know uh, bake again. Of course this is a general script for baking okay it's not doing miracle it's just speeding up uh, a bit. You can also tweak if you want okay the 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 script to uh, do different things depending on uh, your need, okay? You're free to do whatever you want. But I'm going to stick to the default, okay, uh, behavior of the script for right now. So now I got my baked scene, okay, that it's on my second layer. And this is the scene that I want to export. So I'm going to go back in my first layer, select everything, and then push M and let's say 5. So I dump all the, the content of my first layer to my fifth layer. And I'm going to exchange, I'm going to go on my second layer and M and 1 and put back the result of my bake script inside my first layer. I'm going to select my camera because inside my application I am looking for camera and I'm not looking for camera.001 as you can see here that I've been uh, modified. So I'm going to modify this name, the name of the, the camera, select everything and now I'm going to go search my standard SIO2 exporter here. And for the scene, I'm going to rename it with Tutorial uh, 11. Everything is selected in my first layer. Execute the script. Modify the output path to point to the data, data directory of my SDK. And export. I'm going to go back to Xcode. Link, nothing new. Again, link my tutorial. 11.sio2 with my Xcode project inside the resource directory and I'm going to have a first test run. <coughs> okay, this is the scene that we baked. As you can see here, okay, uh, it's looking pretty decent, okay, but you can see here that, okay, on the cube, it's not really as sharp as it should be, okay. Of course, the bigger the texture size you put, okay, the better the quality of the image will be. But the longer you'll have to wait to see uh, the result. Now, uh, this is good, but it's, like I was saying, it's, it's blurry. It's a little bit too blurry. For the plane, it's still acceptable. Or for the cube here, it is not acceptable. So depending on what exactly you want to do, you might want to use this technique, okay, or the technique that I'm about to show, that is strictly and only using shadow maps, okay? Close this, and I'm going to go remove my scene here since I'm going to create a new one. And stop, please. Thank you. And I'm going to go back to my scene in Blender. I'm going to select everything, <coughs> and I'm going to delete simply my scene. Go back to my fifth layer and put back my scene on the first layer. I'm going to quit my script and go select back bake.py. Now this time I'm only going to want to bake all, and you know, just for security purpose. Normally the file should be overwritten, but okay, just here, delete the result of my baking. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to <coughs> this time only bake the shadow map. So basically, my diffuse channel will stay the same, okay, as it is right now with my stone wall texture and my. Uh, little axis texture here, okay, and this time I'm only going to bake the shadow map. So in order to do so, bake shadow map should be switched, okay, for a value greater than zero, whatever it is. And now the bake text channel, okay, basically if I go back in buttons and select oops, select my object and go in texture, where do I want <coughs> where do I want to link my uh, shadow map? In our case, we're going to want to link it right here, okay? So basically, for Blender, this is the texture channel 1, okay? 0, 1, and so on, okay? So when we're going to render it in SIO2, what is going to happen?